My music has an international feel. It really goes around the world. I mean, it's a combination of European sound and American sound, which I think is unique in the way that American artists don't usually mix with European sound. And I think now my style is ah, emotional rock. I don't know what to call it. Laura Branigan has recorded her unique music on four albums of her own so far. And throughout all four LPs, she's also projected that all-important element, emotion. With uh, my first album, Branigan, I really was only aware of the fact that I could sing and I, I felt touch people's hearts. I wasn't sure of my direction. I wasn't sure of what types of songs I should be singing. I, all I knew was that they should be emotional. Laura Branigan's latest album, Hold Me, retains her emotional approach to singing, but she says it also reflects the experience she's gained since her 1982 debut. Hold Me, for myself, is really the best piece of work I've done so far. I was involved in it more so all around. Um, I had more of a sense of myself as an artist. I'm now I'm very solid in my direction, and um, the material is very, very strong. The first strong song to scale the music charts from Laura Branigan's Hold Me album is called Spanish Eddie. Like Laura Branigan's first big hit, Gloria, it's a story starring an unusual character. It's really a great lyric. It's a great up melody. It reminds me of Gloria the most of the songs I've done because it, it's about a guy who was a street hero and um, how he really did himself in by getting in with the wrong people. Basically, um... I guess getting mixed up in drugs. You know, people aren't aware of that in the song, but that's what it is about. There's a line where it says, um, and we was mixing Vicks with lemon gin, the night Spanish Eddie cashed it in. Now I found out what that meant in Vicks with lemon gin. Apparently they, Vicks, they melt it down and they get the codeine out of it or something and mix it with lemon gin, you know, when you, cause we, the boys were out of stuff uptown. <laughs> so it's really about the night Spanish Eddie cashed it in. It's a sad story, except the music is up. So it makes everybody feel up.
Laura Branigan goes from a Spanish Eddie to an Italian Gloria. After this, on the Hot Ones. A golden debut with a chart-topping smash. That's how Laura Branigan began her recording career. From her debut album, Branigan, she danced her way to the top of the music charts during the summer of 1982 with Gloria. Gloria took six months to go to number one, which is a long time for a record. And my manager and I would go around to all the dance clubs. And I had never sung before in front of people, you know, but once. And so I, I didn't have the experience and my voice that was not, it was strong immediately, but I didn't have the power to really sing many songs. And I was, I'd always say to her, do you think I know the song? Do you think I know it? And I'd go out and start singing and they'd be screaming. I was like, oh, I can't believe it. But that was the most grueling summer of my life, I must say. It was tough. The touring was tough, but the song Gloria was a proven hit. The melody was originally popular in Europe. Gloria is an Italian song originally recorded about three years and made into a big hit in all the non-English speaking countries by Umberto Tazzi. He's an Italian artist. It was in Italian. Jack White, my producer, who was German, brought the song to me. I thought it sounded extremely European, but it had something special to it. And I, and I said, you know, we really need to Americanize it. So we went in and gave it the American kick, rewrote the lyrics. And the song itself about Gloria is really um, a song, it's sort of a sad song. It's about a girl in the fast lane. They're caught up and really she better slow down. She's going to run into some bad areas and um but the music is so up so that it really would have affected had on people was that it it made them almost feel like it was a survival song for them because they could relate to it but the music made them feel so happy
aria was from Laura Branigan's debut album, Branigan. In 1983, she released her second LP, Branigan 2. She also made her second appearance in the top five on the music charts during the spring of that year with Solitaire. Solitaire is a French song. And um, I found Solitaire when I went over to Germany to uh, promote Gloria. And I heard this girl, Martine Clemenceau, who wrote the song, performing it in a German TV show. And I ran from the hallway into the studio and I listened and I thought, what a great song. And um, so when I did the second album, we went and f tracked it down. And of course, the lyrics had to be rewritten. And they were written by Diane Warren, who's a very good lyricist. Originally, it was about a, the solitude of, of the, the mountain peak and the ocean. And what we did is make it into more of a... Um, you know, a, a love song. Gloria was singing about her emotions, whereas Solitaire, I was singing about my emotions. But I was feeling how you left me there, you know, now see how it feels. on the hot ones, Laura Branigan loses her self-control. Sales at... Seeing 
seeing Laura Branigan live is a real experience. She says she's learned to put on quite a show and learned to make the audience a secret part of her performance. What I do is I pick out people that are receptive to me. And some may be receptive, but I can't see it because their way of, of showing it is not as overt, you know. And so I have to at least hope that that's what it is. So I work the people and I get my energy off um, those that are receptive and I sort of rely on them as some kind of help for me. And little by little I see the others break down. And you know, it's, you really have to sort of unabashedly give yourself to the audience and with somewhere deep inside you might, might be hurt, but um, I usually don't pay attention to that part of my brain. The vulnerability of performing live isn't as apparent when an artist releases a performance on vinyl. Laura Branigan is equally successful at both. She was honored with her second gold album when she released her LP, Self Control, last year. The title tune hit the top five in the music charts during the summer of 1984. Great song, I love it. It was something different than anything I've done because it gave me a chance to use my voice in more of a subtle way. And it's a very sexy song. And um, the video was <laughs> out there, and, <laughs> and there was a lot of controversy about the video, but I loved it. Forget the self-control and hold on to Laura Branigan. After this, on The Hot Ones. As a singer, Laura Branigan often interprets songs written by others. She says, though, it's easy to pick a classic because two ingredients will grab her ear immediately. A great melody, but it's always simple. It's something that can last forever and never has a time barrier on it. It's not, um, you know, an 80s sound or a 20s sound. It always is a great, great melody. And then lyrics, which really touch people. And it's always the classics that are the sad songs, you know, the ones that really rip, rip people's hearts out. On the cover of Laura Branigan's latest album, Hold Me, she's pictured holding a Raggedy Andy doll, a very special Raggedy Andy doll. Andy on the front there is my mascot. He's my good luck piece. It was a gift to me from a friend, and so he stays with me everywhere I go. Wanting someone to hold of the human variety is the subject of the title song from Laura Branigan's Hold Me album. Hold Me is one of those songs written by Beth Anderson, Bill Bourdain. One of those songs that I think sneaks up on a person. It starts out very subtle, and then all of a sudden breaks into the, the rhythmic chorus. I think it's something that everybody's felt at one time or another. Hold me.
Brannigan holds many talents, including the ability to act. She's already showcased her acting skills in her videos, but soon she'll be taking on a much bigger project. Well, I'm scheduled to do in the fall, next fall, a film in Australia by the same team that did、uh, the movie Baker Morant, which was a great film. I don't know if anyone's seen it out there. I know they have, but I, it was one of my favorite films. And、um, it's a starring role, and it's all acting. Add yet another talent to acting. Songwriting. Laura Branigan co-wrote "Tenderness" for her latest album. Her composing cohorts were her longtime producer Jack White and Mark Spiro, who co-wrote three other songs for her "Hold Me" LP. It was funny how that came about. We, it was a rainy day, and we decided to write a song together. And we had a rhythmic structure. We went up to Jack's house and banged it around for a while, and.、Um, The idea of the song is I want a little tenderness of my own. I don't always want to give my heart out and have it ripped apart. I want my own tenderness. Tenderness is only part of the picture in another tune from Laura Branigan's "Hold Me" album. A bitter message for an old love is in a song called "I Found Someone." This song is another one of those great, great ballads about a heart being torn apart. You know, I'm singing to some guy who left me and really tore my heart apart, and now I found someone to take away the heartache, take away the loneliness. The someone who's found turns out to be less than perfect. Laura Branigan has a song for the occasion on her latest LP. It's called "Foolish Lullaby." That's a beautiful, I think, classic melody. It's an interesting story to the song because it's, it's about someone saying, you know, the truth is we really sing a foolish lullaby because here you are, lying here beside me, you're still with her. I mean, what I'm, I'm talking to him, and I'm saying, you know, do you know how that makes me feel when you're still beside me, and you, and you say, you know, what makes her so right for you? So I think that subject hasn't really been touched upon too much in quite this way. The lyrics are very, very good. What often happens following a lullaby, even a foolish one, is sleep. Laura Branigan says when she dreams, she never pictures herself as a celebrity, despite her current superstar status. I was thinking about the dreams that I have, and all my dreams have nothing to do with me being famous or having money or anything. They all have to do with the same kind of dreams I've had as a little girl. I don't really think of myself that way. I. I do my work, and I know a part of my work is the public eye, and I love my fans, and I appreciate them. But I don't think of myself as set apart. 
Whether she dreams about it or not, Laura Branigan is special, and the release of her fourth album, Hold Me, reveals why. One tune on the album is called Forever Young, and she says she first heard it performed by its composers. Oh, I love that song. Forever Young was written by a group called Alphaville. It was a German group. I was over this past spring in Europe, in Germany, doing this big concert with、um, like 30 different bands, and Alphaville was there, and they sang Forever Young, and I fell in love with the song. We decided that we were going to get that sucker, and we did. And I just love it. I have it at the end of my show, and it's the kind of song I think that there's no no one in the world that can't relate to it. There's not one person in the world that cannot relate to it. It's so mystical and, and peaceful, and、um, it has to do forever young has to do not with age so much, but as staying young at heart. Hoping for the best, but expecting the worst. Are you gonna drop the bomb or not? Let us die young or let us live forever. We don't have the power, but we never say never. Sitting in a sandpit, life is a short trip. The music's for the sad man. Can you imagine when this race is won? As we turn our faces into the sun. Praising our leaders, we're getting in tune. The music's played by the the madman. Forever young, I want to be forever young. Do you really want to live forever, forever and ever? On the hot ones, Laura Branigan's "The Lucky One." Never lucky. Lucky Laura Branigan. When she released her third album in 1984, called "Self Control," it took off immediately. During the fall of 1984, one of the hits from "Self Control" transcended its TV roots to win radio airplay around the world. It's called "The Lucky One." That was a funny way that came about because originally it was written for a TV movie, and、um, Bruce Roberts is very talented, and we got together and、uh, you know I sang it for the TV movie, it was, and 
He only wrote half the song, and I said, I love that so much. I'm getting this great reaction, so he finished writing it for me. And we put it on the album. You can break away. Oh, you can stay. You choose your life. You're free to fly. Ah, ah, ah. Oh. And fly. Brannigan says she was the lucky one when her manager's partner played a tune for her on a flight to Texas. It's called, How Am I Supposed to Live Without You? The minute I heard that song, well, in fact, I was on a plane with Wally Roker on the way to Dallas. And um, he said, I have a ballad for you to listen to. And, you know, it's hard to find a great ballad. So I thought, okay, I'll listen I heard two bars and I flipped out and I said, I got to have this song. And um, when I, we got to the airport, I called Susan. I said, get it! 
Laura Brannigan's manager, Susan Joseph, did get it. And Laura Brannigan recorded How Am I Supposed to Live Without You for her Brannigan 2 album. And it settled in the upper reaches of the music charts during the fall of 1983. I love that song. It's really more me, I think, than anything. You know, it's something I felt in my life. I could hardly believe it when I heard the news today. I had to come and get it straight from you. They said you were leaving. Someone swept your heart away from the look upon your face. I see it's true. I started out um, going to acting school. I, all I knew was that I had it. I didn't picture what it would be like. I didn't picture what it would be like to actually become a so-called star. I just knew that I wanted to... My main um, vision was performing and singing in front of people and touching them. That's what I wanted to do. ones. 